Hello and welcome to another edition of the Blackwater ETF Insight Series, where we chat with innovative leaders from the ETF and digital assets ecosystem. We're doing a special part series focusing on global capital markets, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Gunjan Shohan, who is Global Head of Capital Markets and Strategic Partners and Senior Managing Director at State Street Global Advisors. It's great to have you here, Gunjan. So why don't we kick it off and start with, you know, what is capital markets and why is it so important to the ETF business? We really see our roles as being crucial linchpin between our investors, the clients who are investing in our ETFs, as well as those who are trading our ETFs. Um, so our authorized participants are our market makers. And we see ourselves as the linchpin in that triangle almost to ensure that first of all, on the trading side, those who are trading our ETFs have all the confidence and the right information uh, that is appropriate on their end to make those trading decisions to come in and out of all market conditions and ensure liquidity is there for our investors under all circumstances. And then on the other side of that, we are integral in client conversations with our sales teams, ensuring that clients know what's the most appropriate choice of execution for them, depending upon what their underlying objectives might be of, of trading ETFs. And you had mentioned in part of that response, you know, obviously talking to clients in terms of trading and ETF best practices when it comes to that. What are you telling them in terms of things that they should consider when placing trades? Yeah, that's a great question and a, and a common one that we we are of, often involved in. So we really focus on ensuring with our end investors that they, they look at three key areas. First of all, we want to make sure that they've got the knowledge of the asset class. As you know, ETFs offer exposure to multiple different asset classes in geographical locations around the world. So we want to make sure that they are knowledgeable and mindful of the trading characteristics of each asset class and each region, um, taking into account things like market opening, when there might be holidays and how those might impact the underlying securities in those ETFs. The second area that we spend time talking to them about is, is the time of day. So making sure that they've got an appreciation and an understanding and benefiting from our insights and intelligence on when the most appropriate time of day might be to help them um, navigate their executions. Again, we would talk about considering when markets are opening and closing and perhaps to avoid trading around the market open and close as, as ETF auctions in Europe especially are just not as liquid. And the US also has its own nuances um, with openings and closings being an area that we, we tend to encourage clients to avoid. Uh, and then the third area is, is making sure that clients are aware of what are the order types that they have an option to choose between and making sure that we are running through with them based upon what the outcomes are that they're looking to achieve, what the most appropriate order type might be for them. Uh, ETFs can trade in a variety of different ways, whether it's at risk or doing a NAV trade, for example. And we would often work with clients to make sure that they're making those choices that are most appropriate for them based upon their outcomes. You know, your role is global in nature. So I'd love to hear from you in terms of, um, you know, how is Europe differ from other markets? You know, you'd mentioned the US earlier and like some other markets that you're dealing with. I'd love to hear a little bit about those differences. Yeah, absolutely. So at State Street Global Advisors, you know, we are active and present across um, all of Europe, Asia Pacific and, and the US. Um, so I truly do have an opportunity to look at all of these big markets and how ETF trading works. Um, and they are all very different functionally. Some of those differences are, are due to market structure. Some of those are due to regional differences. So if I compare and contrast for the purposes of an example, in this instance, Europe and the US, the markets have just matured very differently. Now, some of that is down to when those markets first began. And, you know, we are just coming off of the back of this year celebrating in State Street Global Advisors the 30 year anniversary of, of our largest S&P 500 ETF. Um, and, and that really originated from us back in 1993. So you think of the maturity of the US market from 1993 to where we are today. 
um, that allows for a very different depth and breadth of, of ETF flows and, and volumes compared to where we are in Europe today, where not just because of where the market has, has grown over the last 15 years, but also because of the fact that in Europe, we have a multi-listing approach where you have regional exchanges, which fragments in some cases the liquidity that could be within an ETF through multiple listings of, of one fund. Um, that is not necessarily something that you have to navigate within the US market where liquidity can really be centralized on, on one listing uh, for one ETF. Um, so those sorts of structural differences uh, are very real and, and impact ultimately how ETFs might show up from a trading perspective. But again, in my view, doesn't necessarily, um, you know, impact whether one is good or bad, but is a representation of just different market nuances. And then the third dynamic that I think is worth calling out is the underlying investor base. In the US market, for example, it is it is deep and wide across both the intermediary channel as well as the institutional channel. And in Europe still, we are growing in, in perhaps the intermediary segments and, and you know, retail is beginning to understand the asset class more and the product wrapper more. And the institutional investor base has really been the one that's been leading the way historically. Um, so they different client types tend to have different behaviors in how in how they trade the product and how they understand and where their maturity is in that lifestyle of the product. And then of course, when you take a look at what trades on exchange versus off exchange, that's also different in different markets and geographies. In Europe, you tend to have um, a higher proportion compared to the US that trades off exchange. Um, and that could be down to perhaps the fragmentation in liquidity. That could be down to the, the way institutional investors have traditionally been, been used to execution, or it could be down to, to some other factors, but they're just a few that are worth, worth paying attention to. So do you think um, in terms of capital market team structures, is it something that you think firms can outsource? And the second part of that question is like, do you think size matters? Yeah, um, great question. So, so I'll start with the second part of your question, does size matter? So I'm a big believer in quality of service rather than you know size or scale of a team. Um, not to say that they aren't correlated. So the quality of service, the time and diligence that we pay attention on, whether it's markets oversight, making sure that our, our products are trading in the way that we would expect them to trade, or whether it's making sure that we're managing our relationships with our strategic partners across the board, um, or whether it's making sure that we are helping support our internal colleagues and teams um, in some of the decisions that they might be making all the way from product through to, to distribution. I believe the quality has to be um, right up there and, and has to be top notch. So I'm a big proponent of quality over quantity. Um, and then to answer the first part of your question, can capital markets be outsourced? Again, you know, with the way that we operate at State Street Global Advisors, capital markets is really so integral to so many other internal functions, as well as making sure that we're in the thick of conversations with, with our end clients, with our market makers, with our authorized participants, with our exchange partners. Um, with, with off exchange partners, you know, we are really integral to all parts of the ETF ecosystem. So having that disconnected from, from the core business and being an outsourced function, I think you end up not intentionally, but unintentionally uh, diluting the, the opportunity to really make sure you're grabbing the insights and leveraging them to represent the investors. And, and that's, I think, really important ultimately within what we do in capital markets. Yeah, that makes sense. And I mean, with a lot of the clients that we're speaking to who are looking to actually enter the European ETF market, um, there's no question that part of that conversation entails the importance of capital markets. So we do actually highly suggest when when possible, uh, even depending on the size of the firm, to have someone internally, even if it's just one person, because you do, those relationships are incredibly important and it's such an integral part of the ETF structure. So. Gunjan, thank you so much for your insights. It was really interesting. And for those of you who are watching, thank you for watching. And if you'd like to watch more videos like this, you can go to blackwatersearch.com.